What's up everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I thought I would do something kind of fun today. I was going through some old cassette tapes and for you really young kids out there who might not know what those are, cassette tape. So this is, uh, it's funny, this side says Kill 'Em All because I actually uh, had Kill 'Em All recorded on this side. And then on this side I had Justice and Justice For All. So sadly, I mean, maybe not sadly, I taped over it. And let's see if I have the right side in. Nope, that's us talking about not being able to get girls. We're like 12, 13 years old here, and my friend Al and I, and Al, by the way, is the singer and guitar player that uh, is in Sanctus, the teenage metal band that we would eventually form. But back then, when we were recording ourselves here, we were just jamming together. We did that quite a bit. So instead of just practicing on our own, which we did a lot of, we'd get together all the time and practice mostly Metallica songs. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And then we eventually started writing our own stuff, and then we formed the band. So I kind of wanted to go back and listen to part of a song that we were working on. And this particular song was Fade to Black. And it's kind of funny because we both have practice amps. We're not very good. And uh, I just wanted to listen to it, kind of critique it lick by lick. It's going to be the second solo in Fade to Black. And then I want to kind of show you the things that I've learned over the years that have hopefully improved my playing since then and uh, give you some tips there. So it's just kind of a fun journey down memory lane. And uh, you guys get to hear me uh, kind of embarrass myself here because you're going to hear me after about a year of playing guitar. Actually, a little bit less than that, I think. So let's get to it. And I warn you, it's not pretty. It's not like this beautiful nostalgia like oh it's on cassette it's analog it's gonna sound really old and cool it's it's not that it just sounds old and terrible so <laughs> but it's still fun to listen to okay here we go so al's playing rhythm guitar and he's doing a great job by the way and i'm uh i'm trying to do the lead so here we go fade to black <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, I could hear that my bends were not quite getting there, and it's really harsh to listen to. It's like... Or what did I do there? I like made up a lick there. It wasn't even what Kirk does. Anyways, so yeah, not hitting bends is something I did all the time. I was almost there, but not quite. Let's keep going. So can you guys kind of hear how weak my fingers were? So, all right, so after that I went like this. I didn't know what Kirk was doing the back then. So I just did a bunch of pull-offs and I just hoped for the best. And you could hear that most of it was kind of just noise, you know? And then this part here, I had a very weak pinky, but I still insisted on trying to use it. So I was going. Followed by a really weak bend. Let's hear it again. Well, the end is better than I thought. At least I hit all the notes. So yeah, that whole... The reason why I didn't complete it is because I didn't have my circular picking down yet. So even though Kirk doesn't really do this, it became a very valuable way for me to play a lot of his licks. So I like to go like this. So I'm able to complete all the notes when I do that with very minimal effort as far as picking goes. But back then I was probably turning red and... And then the bend, like I said before, it just wasn't there. I don't think I hit any of the bends right in this whole solo so far. So it's like... And I probably did all downstrokes to do all those notes correctly because I'm afraid if I did any upstrokes, that would have sounded like... Because I could not do upstrokes very well. So yeah, the whole key to getting better at this eventually was to nail the bends. Also to put a little bit of uh, personality into my picking. You know, back then when you're just hoping and praying that everything works, you're not worried or even thinking about having any character. So when you're struggling, you're like, please just let the note work. 
and you're holding your breath and everything's tense and you could hear it through the playing you know what i mean and trust me i'm totally ripping on myself but i also cut myself a ton of slack because it was still like my first year of playing so uh let's keep going i'm worried because like the crazy parts are coming up <laughs> I love it when I just give up and I just sit there and wait for the next part to come. That's something a lot of beginners have to do because you're just like, ah, screw it. We'll just uh, let that go and try to get, try to jump back on the train when we can, you know? So, okay, this, so this part right here. I think I went. And my tone was horrendous, by the way. I had a huge PV amp, but I think I had the treble all the way up to 11, it sounds like, and the bass completely shut off. It's hilarious because it was such a huge amp, but it was so tinny sounding. Okay, so I kind of made it through the descending part. I was kind of playing choppy like that. And then on the way up, I got lost and I just stopped. Ah, screw it. So this is another thing that really depended on alternate picking for me to finally relax and be able to play it somewhat uh, musical, musically. Okay, I gotta stop it there because the crazy part's coming up. All right, so now this part, I actually kind of got the bend down. I went. Then I did some really weak tremolo picking and just stopped early. I went. So I didn't really complete things. That's another thing I did back when I was very, uh, very new at guitar. I would never complete the lick. Mostly it was because I was thinking of the next lick more than the one that I was actually playing. So that's a good tip. Try to complete your licks, uh, no matter how slow you have to play them. Oh, and then I went. Totally blew the bend. This part is actually still kind of a mystery to me. Kirk just kind of makes this chord and goes. So I'll put it in context. I just hear that. It just sounds like he's just strumming away. All right, you guys ready for the next part? I'm kind of nervous. Here we go. Oh no. Oh, I'm afraid to hear the next bend. Okay. So I hadn't yet come up with my rotating patterns yet, either with a pick or my fingers. So I just sort of did the same thing over and over again. I went. I could hear myself really trying though. I give myself an A for effort. And then the next part. It's funny because I was struggling to reach the 19th fret. I wonder if it's because my Les Paul copy guitar was kind of hard to play. very much struggling there until I discovered this way of picking. It's a very economical way of picking, economy picking. So now I would go. Then when I move up here, it's very circular. Feels very natural and it really flows. Even on the highest frets. It's kind of nice. This guitar has scalloped frets. From the 21st fret all the way to the 24th, scalloped. It's kind of cool. Okay, here comes the bend of death. Ready? Ooh. You can do it. Okay, barely squeaked by, literally squeaked. Uh, this is a tough bend even today because anytime you're on the 22nd fret and you have to bend it a whole step, if you don't nail it, it can be a little bit uh, hard on the ears. So I was going. 
just hoping to get anything out of it. Nowadays, I would measure it a little bit better, I think, and it feels right to just hit the right pitch for me, finally. And a little bit happy that I was able to descend and do the descending pattern. That's why I like to teach this pattern quite a bit, because it was with me for so much of my life. But just going in threes, like... Of course, no vibrato back then either. That's kind of what added to the harshness as well. All right, so we just ended it the old school Metallica way. So what I had to focus on after this example of this version of myself was number one being able to be more confident in my picking that was a huge thing getting my bends to be in tune for sure uh, getting this circular picking to, to develop for my own style even though kirk hammett doesn't do that very much i don't think adding vibrato helped quite a bit even for my bends so whenever i bend now i still add a little bit of personality to it i don't just do a straight flat bend like like I used to. So that helped a lot as well. And then just getting confident by doing this over and over and over again. I mean, we probably played that like 20 times just this night. And then uh, getting together all the time, it really helped to have a jamming partner because we kind of kept each other in check. We had to keep improving with each other. And if somebody showed up and they didn't know their part, it was a bummer because there's only two of us. And because we formed a pretty strong nucleus back then, we were able to easily find band members and just start up and be a band right away. We didn't have to go from scratch. So yeah, that was kind of fun to go through, listen to my old self, remember kind of how I used to play and uh, with all these years now between us, what I had to do to finally get to the place where I was playing up to a higher level to where it's not hard to listen to. <laughs> all right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. I might find a few other tapes. I have about six cassettes over there. And if I find anything else interesting, I'll be sure to do a quick video on it or I'll play it on my next live stream. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks.